Hello, my name is Rossella and today I'm going to do the sample exam paper included in this book. If you haven't done it yet, click there and subscribe to my channel to be the first one to watch my next videos. You can find me on Facebook, Theory Virtuoso, and Instagram, Theory Virtuoso. You can also visit my website, theorywirtuoso.com, where you can find all the videos that I publish. There are music theory videos to revise and improve your knowledge. Tutorials on discovering music theory. Tutorials on past exam papers in the new online format from 2020. Quizzes and piano tutorials to improve your performance. Thank you for watching. Bye! The first section of this sample exam paper starts with rhythm and we need to find the right time signature for each of these three bars. First of all, we look at each bar from above and see if we have a sort of grouping that can help us. And we need to see whether we can count in simple time or compound time. And the difference is that in simple time, the subdivisions are two, so one and two and and then you can go up to three or up to four. In compound time, the subdivisions are three. So we do like one and and, two and and, three and and. In the first bar, we have one group of things, two groups of things, three groups of things, and four groups of things. The options are 6 fourth, 4 fourth, or 5 fourth. And the time signatures here mean basically this. How many crotchets do we have in a bar? Do we have 6, 4, or 5 crotchets? That's the thing. So I see 4 groups of things. If each of them is a crotchet, the answer is 4. Let's have a look. We have a six to plait. We have something complicated here. I would go for the easiest things. Two quavers, two quavers. Each of them is one crotchet. So we have one crotchet here, one crotchet here. Now, if the other two are two crotchets, we are in four fourth. One quaver and four demi-semi quavers. Four demi-semi quavers are um, equal to two semiquavers because each pair is one semiquaver. Two semiquavers equals one quaver. So one quaver plus one quaver equals one crotchet. Let me do this again. Each of them, well each pair, is a semiquaver. So we have one semiquaver, two semiquavers. Here. One and two. Two semiquavers equals one quaver and two quavers equals one crotchet. So we have one crotchet here. Do we have another crotchet here? Yes, I think so, because six semiquavers as a six as a sextuplet equals four semiquavers and four semiquavers so this is equal to oops what did i do four semiquavers equals one crotchet because each pair equals one quaver and so two quavers equals one crotchet. So in the end, we have one crotchet, two crotchets, three crotchets, four crotchets. And so four crotchets in a bar or four crotchet beats in a bar, it is the same. Four fourth. The next one. First of all, let's see the options. Six eighths, compound time, seven eighths, and four fourth simple times. These time signatures mean, do we have six quavers in the bar? 
divided in two groups of three? Or do we have seven quavers in this bar divided in three plus four or four plus three? It depends on the composer. Or do we have four crotchets in a bar? By looking at this from above, okay, I can see that uh, we don't have a time, a simple time, because we have one crotchet here and that makes us think of a simple time, but then we have one quaver on its own. And when we have one quaver on its own, it, it is impossible that we are in, um, in simple time because we need the other half of the movement. And the other half of the movement could be two qua semiquavers, but these two semiquavers are not alone and are, are not grouped, okay, beamed together with the quaver. So the grouping is key in this case. When we have one crotchet and one quaver, it's very likely that we are in compound time. So we can exclude four fourth, and we have the remainder are both possible. One is six eight, one is seven eight. So now we need to answer. We need. We only need to answer this question: Do we have six quavers or seven quavers in this bar? We shall count. One quaver is here. One quaver is made up of two semiquavers. So one, two and three, okay, two and two. So we have three quavers here. Then we have one quaver on its own and two quavers included in this crotchet. So we have one, two, three, one, two, three, six. Therefore, the answer is six eighths. And I hope that this is clear. For example, if we would have here a crotchet, another crotchet, that would be four plus three, therefore seven eighths, for example. It could either happen that we would have three quavers here and four here. And the reason is, is a choice of the composer. The last example, it's very long and the options are, in fact, 12 quavers, divided in four groups of three quavers each, seven fourths, so seven crotchets or five crotchets. First of all, we need to um, identify whether we are talking about a compound time or a simple time. And the answer is here in these triplets. If we have three quavers, as a triplet, it means simple time, because in a compound time, the three quavers would stand on their own without the triplet, because one and and, the subdivisions are already three, so they fit perfectly into that movement, one and and. In a simple time, we have one and, two subdivisions, therefore, we need an irregular amount of notes so we need a special thing because three quavers don't fit so we can exclude 12 eights straight away now we only need to count the crotchets and identify whether they are seven or five let's have a look it, it looks quite long honestly we have two um, crotchets here this is a minimum rest we have another minimum here so we are already um, we already have, right at the beginning, and right at the end, we have four um, crotchets. So it, it is unlikely that they are just one crotchet uh, here. So I think the answer is seven fourths, but let's go in order. We have two crotchets here. Why now are we counting in, in crotchets? Because the options are in crotchets. So it's either seven crotchets or five crotchets. So I count in crotchets and I hope that this is clear. Let's start on this. We have two quavers equals one crotchet. Three quavers as a triplet equals two. Three quavers are in the space of two. And, um, 
and two quavers is one quartet. Three quavers, that's the same, they are the same. Three quavers in the space of two, so another quartet. If we count them, one, two, four, six, seven, seven fourth. There you go. So guys, to answer this, you can use a mathematical system. So counting two quavers together, one eight plus one eight equals one fourth and so forth, equals two eighths. And then simplify it is one fourth and so forth. You can do that if your system is more, if you like mathematics, it, it's fair enough, it's okay. But as we're talking about music, I would recommend to go in a musical way. Um, so consider that quaver, semi-quavers, quavers, crotchets, minim, semi-breve. So go step by step until you can't go further. You've reached the, um, the top, the maximum, the orientation value. This is what you should look for. Okay, this is key. This is what you need to consider. Okay, and I hope that this is clear. Let's move on to the second question. In this second question, we need to select one of these three bars that shows this bar correctly rewritten in compound time. Now, from two crotchets in a bar, we are where the subdivisions are one and two and we would need to create an equivalent rhythm in compound time where we have one and and two and and i've already told you the answer here but let's have a look at the three options here let's exclude the option that has the incorrect time signature we have six eights, four eights and six eights. Four eights, it's not a compound time. This simply means four quavers in a bar, which means one and two and. This is also incorrect because two fourth equals two movements and we can't have four movements. So one and two and three and four and. This is uh, definitely wrong. The remainder um, options are both in 6 8 and this is the correct time signature. In compound time, 2 4 would become 6 8 because we have two movements with two subdivisions um, in each of them 1 and 2 and. And here, they become two movements with, with three subdivisions each. So one and, and, two and, and. So six eights, six eights. Now let's have a look. The triplet, as we said in exercise one, the triplets in simple time become three quavers. One, two, three. Well, let's do it as it is. So one, two, rest, quaver rest, and then one, two, three. As simple as that. Because in a simple time, we have uh, one and two subdivisions. Therefore, two, three quavers don't fit. We need a special thing. In compound time, three quavers fit perfectly one and and. So we only need to find now the option where we have this figure and it is this one here. One, two, three, rest, note, rest. So the answer is the third. If we look at this option, here we have one, two, three, four, five, six quavers, but they are grouped in two. And this is incorrect. We don't have one, two, one, two, one, two, but
but in 6 eighths, the compound time again has three subdivisions in each movement. So we have two groups of three one, two, three, one, two, three. And the middle of the bar must be clearly indicated. The middle of the bar here is in, within this crotchet rest, and this is incorrect. I hope this is clear, guys. Grouping and time signatures are very closely related to each other. So think in uh, subdivisions and you will have everything much more clear and answered straightforwardly, okay? We can move on to the last question of the page. We only need to complete the two sentences by adding a number. In 12 sixteenth, therefore, a piece in which every bar contains 12 semiquavers grouped in three, so four groups of three semiquavers, there are X number of dotted quaver beats in a bar. Okay, so I've already answered that. We In 12 sixteenth, we have four groups of three semiquavers. Three semiquavers equals a dotted quaver because two of them is a quaver plus another half. So how many dotted quavers do we have? Four. That's the answer. Very quick. A dotted semi breve is equal to x number of minims. A semi breve is made up of two minims plus another another half of semi breve, which is another minim, because it's a dotted one. It's a dotted semi breve. So we have three minims. Again, the minimum is the half of a semi breve. So to make up a semi breve, we need two minims. Then the dot equal. So let me write it here as a dotted semi breve. Now uh, the dot is another half of the semi breve, therefore another minim, and this is it. Easy. Let's move on. In this question four, we need to tick one bar where the notes have been grouped correctly. The time signature is four eighths, which means four quavers in a bar. So we must have four things and each thing is a quaver. We need to have this. One, two, one, two. And the middle of the bar here must be clearly indicated. So we can't have one quaver, one crotchet and one quaver. No, because here the middle of the bar is within this. So we need to have four quavers, two plus two. Um, two demi-semi quavers equals one semi quaver plus one semi-quaver, this is one quaver, hmm? one quaver. This is another quaver, so let me, let me do it better because Okay, one quaver, one quaver, one semi quaver, and another one, another semi quaver. So this is another quaver, and this is another quaver because the figure is the same, they're just swapped round. So this bar looks correct because we have two on a side and two on the other side. Let's compare it with the other ones again. As I always say, exclude the other options 
because it might be that you have missed something in your thinking and by excluding the other options, you make sure that your answer is correct. This is correct and this is correct. Now, the only difference between these two bars is the ending. And in this ending, the quaver, which is part of the counting, has been separated. And one half is on a side, the other half is with the third quaver. So this is incorrect. In this case, the same thing um, was done to the first quaver, where we have half of it uh, on, a, on a count and the other half on the second count. And this is all incorrect here. We don't have, we do see four groups of things, but each group is not a quaver. So the only possible answer here is the first one. Guys, listen carefully to what I am saying and saying and saying over and over again. Think musically and mathematically and logically. Think in, so translate what you see, the time signature, with something that you could understand. A mathematical thing, a visual thing, a musical thing, something that you can relate to and engage with. This allows you to think further and identify the answer because you do understand what you're seeing. You are translating it translating it into something that you could engage with. Okay? I hope this is clear. The last question relating to rhythm. Here, as I always say, we need to be the teacher of this imaginary student that has filled the gaps with rests. Are the rests correct or not? Again, this is relating to grouping and time signature. Let's have a look at the time signature first. We have six fourth, which means six crotchets in a bar. And this is a compound time because six is always grouped in three. So we have three subdivisions, one and and, two and and, for twice basically for two movements. So we need to see one, two and three crotchets on a side and then one, two and three crotchets on the other side. Where the middle of the bar falls somewhere else, it is incorrect. So, one, two, and three. One, two, three. This is correct, because the other option would have been a crotchet rest, but a crotchet rest would not make us see the three subdivisions. One, two, and three. So this is not correct. And the quavers are correct. Now here we have one, two, and three. One, two, three. So this is perfectly done. We can't have a minim for the same reason. And here, of course, this is wrong. If this is correct, this is wrong because we can't have one, two, one, two together. We need to see the subdivisions. So this is incorrect. That was quick. So again, guys, think. So this, I think, I think the best way to go in this whole first section of the exam paper, you need to think, you need to translate the meaning of the time signature. If you know that, you know all the answers. Six fourth means six crotchets in a bar and they are grouped in three because it's a compound time. Let me know if this is not clear enough and I will explain it better Let's move on now. 
the second chapter of this exam paper relates to pitch. This is more straightforward than, than we think. Follow my instructions. This is the alto clef and how do I know it? Because I know all the C clefs in order. In the soprano clef, the two bubbles meet on the first line. So the, the symbol is the same but shifted downwards. Soprano, mezzo soprano, alto, tenor and baritone. The two clefs that you are required to know here in this grade 5 are alto and tenor on these two lines. So, alto clef, in the alto clef, the two bubbles meet on the third line and this is middle C because this is a C clef. This note in the treble clef would be B but because this is called Do, one above, so this means that is treble clef plus one. So if you want to know, if you want to read the notes in, um, in the alto clef quickly, you just read them in treble clef and then add one. In treble clef, this would be A, La, plus one, B. There you go, B. Let's move on. In the second question, we need to find the equivalent, the enharmonic equivalent of this note. And then there is a typo here, we have two dots, never mind. Um, the enharmonic equivalent is a note that has the same sound, but a different name. To answer this, I always draw a keyboard Now, it is a little bit too, oh, a, a bit too long, but that's all right. Okay, we have F double sharp, Fa double sharp here, this one here. This note could be called Sol, G, or A, double flat. What do we have here? G flat? No. Mi sharp? That would be F. G? There you go. This one is G. So the answer is this. If you draw a keyboard, it is much better because you visualize exactly what you're looking for. F double sharp, F sharp, double sharp, two steps above. This note is clearly G. Or A double flat, two steps below. Okay, let's move on. Question number three. There is a bar written for trumpet in B. We need to transpose it at concert pitch basically, so um, a major second above. Let's, and we need to include the time signature making sure that we correct what has been done incorrectly here. Uh, this is in G major because Fa sharp, a semitone bit, that's the last sharp of the key signature plus one semitone is in G major or um, E minor, but it doesn't matter here now because they share the key signature. G plus one, plus one, one tone, two semitones, equals plus one, equals A major. Now, A major, from A, we go one semitone below, that's G sharp. G sharp is our last sharp. So, Fa, Do, Sol, F, C, G. So, this is correct. That's in A major. Uh, we can draw a keyboard. Okay. La plus one tone equals B. 
So that is correct. Fa is sharp, and this is important. Fa sharp becomes one, two, so sharp. And this is also sharp. Perfect. Do plus one tone becomes re, not D sharp. So this is incorrect. And B flat plus one tone, two semitones, so two steps above, equals do, not do sharp. So this is incorrect. So to answer this correctly, this question correctly, you need to call the notes correctly. So you need to remember the accidentals. If you name this note F instead of F sharp, you would answer this incorrectly because this is so sharp. So fa in so sharp is not one ton above, but it's one ton and a half. So this is the key in this question. Okay, make sure that you call the notes as they are. Um, if you want, if you're not sure, you can always write, write them, each of them. So this is la, this is fa sharp, and you do the same here. So you name them. By naming them, you are sure that you call them correctly. Okay, this is, I hope that this is clear. Shall we move on? Yes, of course. In this fourth question, we are asked to compare the three bars here and circle true or false depending on what the three statements say to answer this question my memory if the pitch you want to know middle c are you above or below is key and i say that again if the pitch you want to know middle c are you above or below and this memory is included in one of my videos linked below where you can revise your knowledge about clefs, key signatures and many other topics. In bass clef middle C is here. This is middle C. In the alto clef middle C is here. So this bar starts above middle C. This bar is below middle C. So they are one octave apart. In the treble clef, middle C is down here. So this is more than an octave above. In order of high register, we have treble clef, bass clef, alto clef. Let's see. A and B are at the same pitch. That's incorrect. Well, we already said that this starts above middle C and this is and this starts below middle C, so this is false. B is one octave lower than C. B one octave lower than C. Now this C is this C here, and this means that this note here is here, down here. One octave means that this F should have been written here, but this is an octave um, higher. So let's do that again. This F is down here in the treble clef, would be written below middle C, so down here. Because they say B is an octave lower, that means if that would be true, this note in treble clef would be written here, but in fact it's an octave higher. So, false. They are two octaves apart. C, uh, let's, um, is uh, one octave higher than A. Now, this 
is just this F is just above middle C. So this F is in fact here. And the F in this F in uh, treble clef is exactly an octave higher. So this is correct. C is one octave higher than A. Yes, true. So the key thing here is to find out where middle C is in all the three examples. Then you compare. I hope that I made things clearer for you. We can now move on to a big chapter in every exam papers, keys and scales. We need to tick one box that shows the key signature of D flat major correctly written. Now D flat major has lots of flats and D flat is the penultimate flat in our key signature and if you want to know the system that I use please click on the links in the description below relating to key signatures. There is a playlist that is very useful to, to watch and it's a system that I created myself. So I would recommend to watch it because it's much easier than the circle of fifth. But anyway, D flat is our penultimate flat in the key signature. So we say the flats in order, Si, Mi, La, Re, and I add another one, Sol. And if you call them, if you call the notes with letters, uh, you have a uh, big elephants, eight dinosaurs, goat. Now, the key signatures with flats in all the clefs are a zigzagging descending shape. Si, mi, la, re, sol, do, fa. This one here. Where we don't have this shape, we exclude it. Here we have this one that doesn't really, this is incorrect. First we don't have B as a starting flat and then we have A twice and no, so no. This could be, let's exclude the other ones, this could be, this one can't because we, we need the peak here. So something is written incorrectly here. Okay, this is just through the shape. Now, how do we exclude the wrong answer here? One of them is wrong. We just say the names of the sharps. We just say the names of the flats. Si, mi, la, re, sol. They are all correct. Here, this is middle C. So B would be here. This would be our first flat. This note is G. So this key signature starts on the wrong flat. So this is incorrect and our answer is the bass clef. Easy? I hope so. Let's move on to the sharps. The rule with the sharps is different. The situation is different because we have one shape for all the clefs and another one for the tenor clef. So the shape is this. It has three curves where this the, the second one is longer. Sol, re, la, mi, si. Now look at this. This is definitely incorrect. We have also a ledger line here, that's impossible. This la should have been here, so goodbye. This one here looks correct, it has the same shape. This one here could be correct, but look at here. Fa sharp, that's incorrect, this is F. But the first middle C is here, so do, re, mi, fa here. This is F. Plus, in this case, it's 
it will start here. In the Eternoclef, we have this kind of shape. So it's ascending and it starts from below. So this is incorrect. In base clef, we have a wrong shape. We would need this, but look at here. This is incorrect. It should have been down here. So our correct answer is the alto clef. Do, re, mi, fa. This is fa. Fa, do, so, re, la, mi. Correct. Now this is the key signature of F sharp major. Our, our last sharp is mi sharp plus one semitone, fa sharp, fa F sharp major. If you don't know what I'm talking about, go and watch the playlist relating to key signatures. For now, I move on to the third question of this third chapter. This question is one of the most difficult and confusing one for the students. And I hope that my system is useful for you. We have three melodies and we need to find the key of each of them. And of course we don't have the key signature and we need to find it. So first of all we have flat sharps, flats and sharps. So let's write here the order of sharps and flats. Fa, do, Sol, Re, La, Mi, Si. Fun, colouring, gigantic drawings after eating breakfast. The flats are Si, Mi, La. So the shops in uh, backwards. Do, Si, Mi, La, Re, Sol, Do, Fa. Big elephants ate dinosaurs, goat cheese and figs. Okay, now in each melody we would need to find the last accidental. So we have do, fa, sol and do. So apparently we have three sharps in this melody. With three sharps we could be in A major, because G is the, the last sharp, G sharp plus one semitone equals A. So we could be in A major or F sharp minor, three semitones below from A major, from A, three semitones below. So A, three semitones is Fa sharp, so F sharp. In our options we have E minor, B major, A major, D major, so A major. Now let's exclude the other ones. E minor is the relative minor of G major and G major has just one sharp because G minus one semitone F. B major has lots of sharps because one semitone below is A so we would have five sharps. D and A are missing here. D major has two sharps, Fa and Do, so the only possible answer is A major. Sorted. Let's move on to the second one. We have flats here. Now let's see, let's identify the last flat. But the last flat is useful for us because in fact we need the penultimate. But never mind, we need the last anyway. We have B, we have Re flat. We have La, Sol, Mi, Re, Do, la, la, and C, B. So apparently we have six flats and the penultimate is G. So this could be in G flat. Let's see if we have it in our options. We have B flat minor. G flat major, D flat major and A flat major. Now, we could be in G flat major or in uh, E flat minor and it's not, it is not in our options so uh, we can exclude it. Now, let's circle G flat major 
and let's exclude the other ones. B flat minor is the relative minor of D flat major. D flat has five flats, so C would be additional. D flat major would have five flats. That's the same, same as here, same uh, reasoning. A flat major has only four flats and here we have six. So the only possible answer is G flat. Easy? Let's see the last example. We have only one sharp and it's Sol. Now Sol sharp is the third and if we have the third we must have the first and the second too. So what is the only case in which we can have a sharp without the previous ones? When that sharp is the leading note. Now if G is the leading note the tonic is one semitone above. So from G sharp, we would have A, La. A minor is the relative minor of C major, and C major has no sharps, no flats in the key signature. So this is very likely to be correct. Let's see our options. A minor, here it is, G minor, D major and D minor. Okay, let's exclude the other ones. I circle this, first of all, because I think that this is correct, but let's exclude the other ones. G minor is the relative minor of B flat major, and we would have flats here, uh, C and me, and we don't have them. This me is not flat, so that's not possible. D major would have two sharps, Fa and Do, and here this Do is not sharp, this is not sharp, so impossible. D minor is the relative minor of F major, three semitones above, and F major has one flat. Also, D minor would have the leading note, C sharp, clearly indicated, and C is not sharp here, so it can't be D minor. Done. Is it clear, guys? Um, again, I always, always say when I answer the exam papers, exclude the other answers. Because if you don't exclude them, it might be that you're missing something out in your thinking. And this brings mistakes, might bring mistakes. So let's try not to. Aim to get 75 out of 75. Some slips can happen, but they are slips, not mistakes, okay? Let's move on. Our last question of the page asks us to complete the scale by selecting one of the notes. This scale is in B major. B major minus one semitone is A sharp. So it has five sharps. Fa, Do, Sol, Re, La. Five sharps. These notes are all sharp. B. Now, if you're not confident with uh, reading the notes in bass clef, write it down. Si, do, re, mi. This note must be called i, so F can't be. Now, E, is E sharp? No, natural. That's it. Si, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, a. Goodbye F, goodbye F sharp. Now, would it be A sharp or A? A sharp. Because 
it's one of the sharps included in the key signature. So, A sharp. There was another system that you could use for major scales. Um, you can find out, the, you can use the interval system. Tone, tone, semitone. Tone, 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 semitone. TTS, TTTS. So, one tone. Tone, a semitone between these two. So, D sharp, E. Then, tone, tone, tone. So, G sharp, A sharp. Okay. A tone from G sharp is A sharp. And then there would be a semitone between A sharp and B, and in fact there is. So that's another system that you could use. Or you could use you can use both to double check your answers. Satisfied? Let's move on. This fifth question is also very confusing for most of the students and this is, I'll tell you why, because you want to identify the right answer quickly and in this case it is not possible. We have to go through each of the clef and find out the only correct one because the point of this question is to find the only Right, the only clef that would make this, these three minor scales, and this is key, minor scales. So, um, and I'll tell you later on why it is key, because sometimes we have the option of having a possible major scale, but we need a minor one, so it is impossible. For example, if we find out that this note could be A flat, it can't be A flat because A flat minor doesn't exist, but A flat major does exist. So it is important to call the first note correctly. Okay. If it is C flat minor, this is another scale that doesn't exist. But if that C flat is in fact B, the enharmonic equivalent, it is possible B minor does exist. Really go through every detail and don't feel put off by this. Um, some questions are very quick, some other questions balance that quickness and need patience much more. Okay, so we have a descending scale. The descending scale could be natural or harmonic. We can't have a melodic scale with the sixth and seventh degree raised up because the descending version, the descending melodic descending scale is a natural scale. So let's um, start with a treble clef. In the treble clef, this would be Do flat, C flat, and so C flat. C flat minor doesn't exist because three semitones above would be E double flat. E double flat major doesn't exist. So we can't have a C flat minor scale. In the bass clef, this note will be E flat minor. E flat minor does exist and is the relative minor of three semitones above G flat. Uh, let's write the order of sharps and flats again. Fa, Do, Sol, Re, La, Mi, Si. Fun colouring gigantic drawings after eating breakfast. And then the flats is the other way round. So, si, mi, la, re, sol, do, fa. Similare sol, do, fa. Big elephants ate dinosaurs, goat, cheese, figs. G flat, we said, E flat minor, is the relative minor of G flat, three semitones above. 
and G flat would be our penultimate flat of our key signature. So we would have six flats and it looks like it because this is repeated and we have one, two, three, four, five and six. So I think that the, the answer is bass clef, but we said we need to exclude the other ones. The alto clef is treble clef plus one. So this note will be do flat plus one, re flat. Re flat minor doesn't exist. Instead, we would have C sharp minor. So the uh, enharmonic equivalent. So, no. In the uh, tenor clef, this note will be treble clef minus one. A C flat minus one is B flat minor. B flat minor is the relative minor of uh, three semitones above D flat. So D flat is our penultimate flat and we have five flats. But we don't have Do flat. So at this point we have two options. It could be E flat major, sorry, E flat minor, <coughs> E flat minor, or Do minus one, B flat minor. Let's start with B flat minor and let's have a look. We said a B flat minor is the relative minor of D, so we would have five flats. La, Sol, Fa, Mi, Re, Do, and B flat again. In bass clef, we would have Mi, Re, Do, Si, La, Sol, Fa, Mi. E flat has six. So the only known flat note would be F. And this is it. So the answer is E flat, as we said in the very beginning. And therefore, this note is in bass clef. In this example, I really showed you every single step that you could do. I've identified the absolutely wrong answers and then I've shortlisted two clefs. I wasn't sure and I wrote the notes down to see whether it was correct or not. Look at here. We would have fa flat but not C flat. So that's impossible. If we have this, we would have also this. Okay, so that's why this is impossible. So it can't be in, in the tenor clef, but it, it is in bass clef. Second example. Again, we need to go through every single clef. This note in treble clef is G. G minor is the relative minor of B flat. We would have flats here. But this could be the leading note of G minor. But if we have the leading note, we will have B flat here. Only the sixth and seventh degrees are raised up, but this one would be flat. G minor is the relative minor of B. And this means that we have B and E flat. E flat could be raised up because it's the sixth and seventh degree. But we would have B flat here. So, no. In bass clef, this is B. B minor is the relative minor of D major. D major has two sharps and here we don't have two sharps. This would be sharp. C would be sharp. 
so it's not the base clef either. In the alto clef, treble clef plus one, this is sol plus one, A, La. A minor is the relative minor of C major. C major is has no sharps, no flats. This note could be the leading note, sol sharp. So I think that the answer is this. But as we said before, we need to exclude the other option, the tenor clef, minus one. In the tenor clef, this is G minus one is fa, F minor is the relative minor of A flat. A flat has four flats and we have none here. So the answer is the alto clef and this is A minor. That's the harmonic because we have um, F, G sharp, a, an augmented second between the sixth and the seventh degree. Last option, we have a descending scale. So again, it could be a natural scale or a harmonic scale. Now the harmonic scale would have a, an augmented second between the sixth and the seventh and a semitone here. I don't think this is a harmonic scale. I think it is a natural scale with two sharps. But let's have a look. Again, let's go through each clef individually. In treble clef, this is B. B minor is the relative minor of D major. And D major has two sharps because D minus one semitone, C sharp. So, fa and do. We have fa and do here. So I think the answer is the treble clef. Let's exclude the other ones. In bass clef, this B would be D minor. D minor is the relative minor of F major and F major has only one flat. We have none here. So, bye bye. In the alto clef, plus one, treble clef plus one, B plus one, C, Do minor, C minor, is the relative minor of E flat major, three semitones above. E flat has three flats, and here we have none, goodbye. Treble clef minus one in tenor clef, B minus one is La, A minor, we said that here we have no sharps, no flats, so it can't be. So the answer is the treble clef. Done. This is it. So in this case, patience, patience, patience. You see that the time I've spent to answer this, that's normal. Let's move on to the next question. Chromatic scales. We need to state whether the chromatic scales, the two chromatic scales, are correctly or incorrectly written. So first of all we draw a very long keyboard Okay, this is a chromatic scale starting on F sharp. So this is the alto clef, so F sharp plus one. Okay, treble clef plus one. Fa sharp, sol, sol sharp, la, la sharp, C, C sharp, B sharp, do sharp, re, Re sharp, Mi, Mi sharp, and Fa, which is the same note. First, this should have been sharp. 
and second, these two are the same. Note, mi sharp and fa the same. So I'm afraid this is incorrect. It promised well up to here, but only the last two notes are, were incorrect. So no thank you. Let's see this descending chromatic scale beginning on A in treble clef. La, so sharp, so natural. Fa sharp, fa natural. Mi sharp, that's the same note. It's already incorrect. Mi. Re. Re sharp is missing. No, definitely not. Do sharp, do, si, si flat, la. So there are two mistakes here. So it's false. That's it. If you want, you can do it again. But you will see that these two notes, fa, and mi sharp are the same, then mi re is a tone, so re sharp is missing. So, false. And that was quick. So you see that you compensate uh, these, the time that you spend on some questions with other questions. So, not too bad. Let's move on to the last question relating to keys and scales. Number seven, we need to circle true or false depending on what we read. In the treble clef, this is mi flat. The supertonic um, of mi flat, E flat major is E flat. Impossible, false. The supertonic is the second degree and the second degree from E flat is F. F and this is E flat, incorrect. The tonic, the first degree of F flat, sharp major is F sharp. Yes, it is. The key here is to read the notes in the correct clef. If you read it, this is as F sharp or D sharp, it makes the statement false. In bass clef, this is A, La, okay, F plus 2. Uh, the dominant of E minor is Mi, Fa, is the fifth degree. Mi, Fa, Sol, La, Si is B. It is not A. So, false. And this is another quick question. The key here is to read the notes correctly and to identify exactly what they mean here. Supertonic is the second degree, tonic is the first degree, dominant is the fifth. And then you count. Shall we move on to the fourth section of the exam? Why not? A page dedicated to intervals, another big topic. Don't panic, I'll give you all the tips that I have. Tick one box to name the interval. So here we have E flat and Mi flat and Fa. This is a compound interval because the two notes are more than an octave apart. So what do we do? We either raise the first note up by an octave or we put it down, the second one down by an octave, so I do the second one, so I stay within the stave. Mi flat, fa. Mi flat, fa. Do you know what, guys? I think I am going to write a keyboard here. Okay, Mi flat, Fa is a second and it is a major second because we have two semitones, one tone between them. So it is a major second and here we have a compound major second and this is the correct answer because it's a major second 
but because they are more than an octave apart is a compound major second. It is not a tenth because the non-compound name would be seven plus two. So a second plus a seventh, so it's a ninth. It's not a minor ninth because it's a major interval and it's not augmented because first compound and second it is a major interval. So compound major second. Now here we have sharps so make sure that you name the notes correctly. This is fa sharp and this is B. Again another compound interval What do we do? Um, we either raise it, raise this up or lower it down. I'm doing the other way around, I'm doing this, B, here. First of all, the number, Fa, Sol, La, Si, it is a fourth. Now, a compound fourth, and this is incorrect. So we have an eleventh, yes, because seven plus four equals eleven. Now, is it perfect, major or augmented? It can't be major because a fourth could be perfect or diminished or augmented. So we can exclude a major eleventh. A perfect fourth is two tones and a half. So one, two and a half. So it is a perfect, a compound perfect fourth or a perfect eleventh. It can be augmented, so it's a perfect eleventh. The last example, Do, B flat. It is a seventh. Ah, this is interesting. I have a system that you won't find anywhere. So please listen carefully what, to what I say. A seventh can be flipped over. And to do that, I either put B before the second note, before the first, or the other way around. So I make it a second. Now I identify what kind of second it is, and then I swap it, I swap it round again. So B flat, B, C is a second. What kind of second? Major second, because we have one, two semitones. Is a major second. If I flip it over again, a major second becomes a minor seventh. So the answer is minor seventh. That's it. So what do I do? I have a seventh. I flip it over. So you can either do B flat C or B C, B flat C. It's the same. Then I identify the type of second, and it's a major. A major second becomes a minor seventh. So, minor seventh. I don't even have to look at all these things. So, magically, a very complicated and confusing interval becomes so quick that I don't even have to look at the other options that I have. Izzy, let me know this is a system that I've created myself. So please keep that in mind. And if you want me to explain that further, you can either listen to the other questions here or send me an email or leave a comment and I will explain this better. Question number two, we need to circle the type of interval. To understand the type, we need to find the number. Si do. B, C is a second, C, Do. What kind of second? Do we have a tone or a semitone between the two notes? A semitone. So it is a minor second. The second option, the second option has four sharps. This is Sol. How do we know it? Do, Si, La, Sol. Sol is sharp. So sharp, Si. 
Sol, sol, la, si. It is a third. So it could be major, minor. Sol sharp, one and a half. One and a half is a minor third. Now, a major third is two tones apart. This is one and a half, so it's a minor one. One and a half, minor. In the bass clef, this is me, and this is so flat. Now, this is a compound interval because it's the two notes are more than an octave apart. So what do I do? I raise it up one of the notes, so I have them close. I take it as a simple interval and then I add compound. But in this case, we don't even need it. Mi so flat is a third. So a third can be major, minor, augmented, diminished. Mi sol, to have a major third, we need two tones. So mi, one and two. That would be a major third. So again, one and two. G sharp would be a major third. We have minor and we have diminished because we need to get to G flat. So again, one and two would be the major third. Minor, diminished. So this is diminished. Done. Quick and easy, I hope. Shall we move on? The last exercise. We need to write the given interval by adding a higher note. This is important. Don't write it lower because it costs you marks. I think I'm going to do, I'm going to draw the keyboard here. This is in, in treble clef, do flat. We need to write a compound perfect fifth. Now, initially we can exclude the compound uh, interval and we can make it simple. After making it simple, we raise it up by a, an octave. Do flat, a fifth, do, re, mi. Fa, sol. We need to write a G. What kind of G? A fifth is three tones and a half apart. So from Do flat here, we count one, two, three and a half. This note can't be called Fa because we must make it a fifth, not a fourth. Do, re, mi, fa, that's a fourth. We need to call it G. And this G is flat, so G flat. Let's do that one more time. One, two, three and a half. G flat. Now, this is the simple interval. We raise it up by an octave, and this is a compound perfect fifth. There you go. Next one. Augmented seventh from Do, bass clef. You can count, this is E, so Mi, Re, Do. In augmented second, what do we do? What do we do? We flip it over. We need to write a B, okay? And this is our note. But we don't know what kind of B it is, if it's flat, sharp, natural, we don't know. Or oh, double flat, double, double, double sharp. So what I do, I make, I flip it over and I make a diminished second. Do C, I have to change this note, shorten the distance between these notes to make a diminished second. So this is Do, okay? 
Dossi, it is a minor second. To make it diminished, I need to shorten the distance. Therefore, this B is raised up to make it closer to C. So, sharp. B sharp though. You can say, but, but B sharp C is the same note. Yes, but they are two separate notes because we call them differently. So they are different. And you understand this when we talk about chords. If you say Do, Mi, Sol, Si, E, G, that is a chord. If you call E, for example, F flat, C, F flat, G is another chord. So the name of the notes are important. The names of the notes are important. B sharp C is a diminished second. If I flip it over, it becomes an augmented se seventh. That's it. Okay? So the answer is B sharp. Third example. Oh my god, what is this note? Mi, Re, Do, Si, La. I just count. A. We have three flats. A flat. A minor 13. Now, a 13 is a compound. A 13 minor 7th. Compound 6. So, a compound minor 6. A minor 6 is a major third flipped over. So, la flat, let's do it here. A third, um, I need to write a major third from la flat. La flat, two tones apart, so one and two. Fa flat. One, sorry, from A flat, one, G flat, and two, F flat. Now, La, Fa, fa flat, La is a major third, but if we flip it over, so if Fa goes above, it becomes a minor six. Now, this is a simple interval. We need to raise it up by a, an octave. So, fa, flat. There you go. So, what did I do here? First, I identified the compound interval because I needed to make it simple first. Then, because it's a six, instead of counting a six above, I counted the third below. Minor means a major third below, which is here. I found out that a major third below from A flat is F flat. If I flip it over here, it becomes a minor. A major third becomes a minor sixth. Now, this is the simple interval. I need to make it compound, so I raise it, I've raised it up by an octave. That's all. Again, I have invented this system, so you won't find it anywhere else. And if you have any questions, leave me a comment, send me an email. All the links are in the description below. Last example, B flat. A major third from B flat, two tones apart, one and two. D, Si, Do, Re. That's all. Two tones, one and two. Re. Perfect. Is it clear, guys? Have I, have I helped you? Let me know. Leave me a comment. And remember, I always read them and I always answer. Let's move on now. The fifth section relates to chords. In the first question, we need to identify the chords of the melody 
and write it with Roman numerals. We are in F major, we have one flat, it starts on F, it ends on F, we are in F major. The notes here are Fa, La, Do, Fa, La. Fa, So, La, Si, Do. This is the first degree. We need to create cadences, so make sure that the second chord makes sense as a, as a cadence. In the second bar, we have Mi and Sol. One note is missing. It could be, what could it be? Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol. So there is C is missing here. And C for F major is the fifth. Do, Fa, Sol, La, Si, Do. It's the fifth degree. So one five. That's the imperfect cadence on the first line. Let's have a look at the last line. We have a cadence with three chords. Let's see what they are. We have Sol, La, Si, Do, Re. Sol, Si, Fla, Re. Sol, La, Si, Do, Re. Sol for F major is the second degree. So this is the chord built on the second degree of the F major scale. In the second bar, we have Sol, Mi and Do. We need to put them in order. So we have Sol, Mi and Do. Now, we need to put them in order so that we have this shape where we have one note down, one up, one down, one up, one down. So Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol. That's the Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol. Do, Mi, Sol for F is the fifth degree. We've done it here. So five. In the last bar, we have Fa, Do and La. So Fa, La, Do. Fa, La, Do is the first degree. Fa and Fa. So our cadence is 251, is an extended perfect cadence. So in this um, question, try to put the notes in order so that you form a chord. And the chord must be in the root position. So if you are on the piano, you play it like that. One on, off, on, off, on. Then you see the bottom note and you count the distance, the interval between the key and that note. You count it as an interval and you find the chord. Easy. Shall we move on? Let's move on. In this question, we need to identify the uh, cadence. But to do that, we need to find out what chords form the cadence. We are in D major and the, the notes of the chords are Re, Fa sharp, Re and La. Re is doubled, we can cross it out. We put them in order, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, that's in order. So D, D, first. Then we have second chord, La, Mi, Do sharp, and La. Now to put them in order, La, Si, well La is doubled so we can cross one out. La, Si, Do, Re, Mi. La, Do sharp, Mi. La, Do sharp, Mi, A is the bottom note. We count the distance between these two. So, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La, fifth degree. One five. And one five is the imperfect cadence. Next one. C major. Sol. 
Si, Sol e Re. Sol is doubled in order Sol, La, Si, Do, Re. G is the bottom note and the distance between Si and G is Do, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, the fifth. Second chord, Do, Do, Sol and Mi. Do is doubled, Do, Mi, Sol. Do, Mi, Sol, Do, Mi, Sol. First, five, one. It is a perfect cadence. Plego is four, one, and we don't have it here. And it is all done. I hope this system makes it easy for you. Last one. In this question, we need to do a step further. So we need to state what kind of inversion are the given chords. We are in G major, one sharp. So let's do the whole thing again. We have Fa sharp, La and Re. To put them in order, Re, Mi, Fa, Sol, La. Re, Fa sharp, La. Re is the bottom note. Now, what is Re for G in G major? Sol, La, Si, Do, Re is the fifth degree. So the chord is five. Now, if we have Re, if this note is Re, is 5A. If it's Fa sharp, is 5B. If it's A, is 5C. This note is Fa sharp, so it's 5B. And this is the answer. 5B. The second chord. La, La, Do, Mi. La is doubled. La, Si, Do, Re, Mi. That's in order. The bottom note is La. La for G major is Sol, La. Is the second degree. Now, if at the bottom of the chord there is La is 2A, if there is Do is 2B, if there is Mi is 2C. This note is in bass clef is called A, so it's 2A. This one. The last chord we have G, another Sol, C, and another Sol. Now we have lots of Gs here, and we can exclude a few of them. Um, it is missed Sol, La, Si, Do, Re. Re is missed. Sol, Si, Re. And Sol, La, Si, Do, Re. Sol is the bottom note. And this is the tonic. Now, what is at the bottom here? G, B or D? G. So, A. 1A. Finished. Patience and structure. Step by step. Don't rush if you're not sure. I hope that my system helps you. Let me know if not. Let's move on to the sixth section of this exam. Terms and signs. Here we need to memorize things. And there are some shortcuts. And the shortcuts are that when you play something, you remember what you see. So, for example, if in, in one of the pieces that you play, you have doloroso, try to remember it. So try to relate the names with the expression 
or the dynamic that you make, the expression, the tone that you create. That's the only way of remembering them. Anyway, doloroso is an Italian word for sorrowful, sad, painful. A niente means to nothing, niente, nil. Cantando is chant, so chanting, singing, that's all. I'm so sorry, I don't have any other ways of um, helping you here. You need to remember what you find in the pieces. Cantando, cantabile, singing. Second question, ornaments. We need to identify what kind of ornament we have. Sol, la flat, sol. We have two notes. It can be a trill. And it can be either a chaccatura or a poggiatura because we have just two notes. Very short in the acciaccatura, less short in the appoggiatura. So the only answer could be upper mordant. And in fact, we have this shape. Ta ta ta, ta ta ta. And that's exactly what it is. Lower modern, ta ta ta. A note lower. Okay, ta ta ta, ta ta ta. Again, similar to the previous question, remember what you find in your pieces. Engage with what you do when you play. The next thing is a figure. Ta ta ta. Ta, ta, which is note, up note, note, lower note, note. And this is a turn or gruppetto. Or turn. It can't be the trill because the trill is a long mordant. Di da 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 da. A chaccatura and a poggiatura have just two notes. Ta-da or ta-da. A chaccatura, ta-da. A poggiatura, ta-da. Ta-da, ta-da. So, upper turn. Even if you don't know this, you can exclude the other three very easily. Trill is a longer mordant. ta da da di da di da di da This one in a loop, kind of. We need to answer the questions and, well, we need to read the statements and say whether they are true or false. The oboe uses a double reed and here you need to memorize it. Yes, it has a double reed. The clarinet has a single reed. The xylophone produces sounds of definite pitch. Yes, it's like a piano if you see it. Google it. It looks like a piano. The clarinet has a higher range than the bassoon. Well, yes, I think so. The cello is the lowest sounding string instrument and that is false because it's the double bass or contrabass. That is bigger than the cello, so it produces lower sounds. A flute might be played con sordina. Now the sordina is something that we put on the instruments to make the sound quieter or less rich and it's something that is added to the instrument and I'm afraid the flute doesn't have it. So false. That's it. Sorted. Here how do you answer these questions? You need to know something about the instruments because either you play it or somebody tells you or you have attended a concert, you've watched it online, you googled it, uh, you've listened to something, you've learned the mechanism, something like that. But experience definitely helps here to improve memory. Okay, let's move on. Last, the last section 
of this exam paper. In this section, we need to answer the questions based on what we see in the piece that we have. We have a gorgeous piece for flute and piano. The first question relates to pitch. We need to compare the three options with the first bar of the flute part and I reproduce it here. The first note is La above the stave. The middle C is here in the tenor clef, in the alto clef middle C is, in the bass clef middle C is here, in the uh, tenor clef middle C is here. In the treble clef, middle C is down here. Only one of these phrases is correct. Let's observe. This is nearly two octaves above middle C. This is very close to middle C. This is also very close to middle C. These two are the same. Look. This is above middle C. So, only A is correctly rewritten two octaves lower. So, middle C is here. This note would be, this is minus one, so it's A, it's here. But this is not two octaves, but it's one octave lower than the original one. Only B and C are correctly rewritten two octaves lower. And in this case, this, these two A's are exactly here. And they are two octaves below the original one. So this could be the correct answer. But let's exclude, as usual, exclude the other two. A, B and C are correctly rewritten one octave lower. No, because these ones are two octaves lower. And only B and C are correctly rewritten one octave lower. No, because they are just below middle C. So they are two octaves lower. We did say it here. So the only answer, correct statement is this. The second one, only B and C are correctly rewritten two octaves lower. This is the original, one octave, two octaves lower. Middle C, middle C, middle C. Sorted, let's move on. We need to circle true or false for each of the statements here. The music should be performed playfully and the answer is true because it's written allegro scherzando and scherzando is an Italian word to say playfully, joyfully. All the notes in bar one should be played slightly separated. Well, yes and no. Yes, because most of the notes, but not all the notes. So this is incorrect, false, because not all the notes, but most of the notes. And it's when you find that slur with the dots. They are an oxymoron, we would call it, because there is a slur that says that it's legato and the dots that say that it's staccato. So it's somewhere in between staccato and legato, slightly separated. The highest note in the extra is an E. So now here we need to see the answer is yes because in the treble clef we have an E near the beginning. The first four notes in the left hand part in bar seven form part of a chromatic scale. So the answer here is false because sol la, the first two notes are one tone apart and to make a chromatic scale we need only semitones. So false. The flute plays an appoggiatura in bar seven, and that is not an appoggiatura, but it is a mordant, so false, done. 
Is it all clear? Let's move on. Question number three. Which other instrument could play the flute part? And why do we say this? Because some of the instruments won't be able to. For example, tuba and double bass are very low in the register. So they couldn't play the flute part. And horn as well, some of the notes are out of the compass. So the only possible answer is the violin. Often violin and flute share not often, but sometimes they do share some pieces. For example, a sonata by Prokofiev in D could be played by flute and piano or violin and piano. In both cases, the sonata by Prokofiev sounds amazing and I recommend you to listen to it. Fourth question, we're nearly there. How many times the supertonic, so the second degree of C major appear in the flute part. So we need to find a re, D. And I see it three times. Three. The very last question. We need to complete the two sentences by adding a number. The note in the flute part of bar four is worth X number of demi quavers. In bar four we have a minim. Now a minim is made up of two cro crotchets and two crotchets are equivalent to eight semi quavers. Each semi quaver is two demi quavers, so double this amount, 16. You can also think that a demi quaver is 1 30 seconds. This means that 32 demi quavers make a semi breve. Because we have a minim, that means half of the semi breve, so 16, half of the 32 demi quavers. There is an instruction to play suddenly quiet in bar. Okay, suddenly is subito. So piano subito and it's in bar four. And with this question, we get, we got to the end of exam. I hope this was clear. Let me know if not, let me know how I can help you further and I shall see you in my next video. Bye. I hope this video was helpful. I just want to thank all the ones who messaged me and email me. It has been great to be in touch with you, honestly. And if you have anything to say, you know, leave me a comment. I always read them and I always reply. Now, if you want to revise other chapters of Discovering Music Theory Grade 5, click there and find other tutorials. And don't forget, tell your friends about it. If it was helpful for you, it will be helpful for other people. Happy watching! I'll see you in my next video. Bye!